Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgk.com and today we are going to light our scene as we have uh, as we talked uh, before. And uh, to do this, I need some window openings in this wall in here. Uh, actually, you can create uh, multiple uh, windows uh, on uh, multiple sides. I guess we could have uh, windows in here and here as well. Uh, that would help us uh, cast some global illumination. Uh, in the scene, some fill light in the scene. But for now, let's just start with this and then add this and see what's happening differently when we do that. So to start with, I'm going to select this box, go to the Modify tab and add some uh, openings. Let's hit two, uh, select these two edges, hit Alt-R for ring selection and hit Connect to create some segments. Uh, I think four segments is good uh, for this. And then let's hit Alt-1 to add uh, some horizontal segments as well. And then I can just select these two uh, polygons and these two. And then hit Bridge. And this will open up uh, some holes uh, on the wall. Now, if this was a real project, I would add some curtains. I would add some uh, frames. I would add some trees outside. Uh, but uh, I'm not going that deep uh, in this scene. I just wanted to show you how you can see a simple clay or gray render uh, in your scene. Uh, as I told you, I've gone uh, very deep uh, in this subject in uh, another tutorial series. I will talk about it at the end of this series. Uh, but in here, we will only see uh, a, a light a gray render. That's it. So it sh uh, don't expect it to be realistic or anything, but uh, I'm. But you will see how... Uh, it moves through uh, more realism as we do this. Okay, whatever. Let's do it. Uh, now, first thing I want you to go to the render setup. I want you to install Corona Render. If you don't have it, you can try this with some other render engine as well. But I will be using Corona Render. Uh, Corona, uh, good, some good news for you is Corona Render is free to use for 30 days. Uh, it has all of its capabilities opened up for you if you download the demo version. After 30 days, you need to buy, uh, you need to buy the software. In this 30 day trial period, you can just try, uh, uh, try the render engine and see if it fits for you, if it's good for you. You can, uh, watch the foretold series, uh, render series uh, of mine, if you'd like to, and see, uh, if you can get a grip uh, on it. So then if you are good with it, you can just buy it and, uh, use it for good. I, uh, really like corner render. I was a V-Ray user. As you can see, I have V-Ray here as well, but uh, for the last, I guess, two or three years, I'm only using corner render. I really, really love it. I really recommend you to uh, try corner render out for free for 30 days and see uh, how it behaves. Because I really think that this software is designed for artists like you and me, not for engineers, uh, not for... Uh, I'm an engineer as well, but uh, by, uh, by education. I'm a mechanical engineer, by the way. Uh, but uh, I, I try to see these things uh, in an artistic way. So it's uh, very useful to use Corona, in my opinion. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to... Um, uh, I'm not going to <laughs> roll on this anymore. Let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, you can... But the last thing I want to tell you is you can just go to download this. You can just go to coronarender.com. Let me show that the web page to you, coronarender.com. And you can just uh, download the uh, software from here, download Corona. And here is the download button for 3ds Max. If you are a cinema user, you can use this. You can get it from here and just uh, create an account for free and you will instantly have 30 day trial to this uh, software. Okay. Now, um, after you uh, uh, install Corona Render. You can go to Render Setup and change your render to Corona Render from here. And you will have this kind of a look in your Render Setup menu. Uh, you don't ne really need to change anything in here, which is very <laughs> cool about Corona. In V-Ray, you instantly do some stuff in the here, but now just uh, close this uh, up and then just go ahead and uh, hit. This is the uh, toolbar you should have when you install Corona. And uh, in here, you can hit this button in here and it will 
uh, start the interactive render uh, thing. As you can see, I, my uh, my uh, license uh, was expired as well. Uh, but I have a monthly renewal, so I I just need to input my password and I'm good to go. Uh, actually, I what I recognize is it's not a 30 day trial; it's a 45 day trial. So, which is very cool, right? And I've input my password, and now I'm good to go. And you will have this uh, frame buffer pop up. And uh, here it be, it's I know it's black because we don't have any light in the scene, but this shows you the render from this camera in here. Uh, what I want to do is uh, let's keep it here so that you can see it's real time. It's very cool. Uh, you can just leave this on. Uh, I really I usually uh, put this in my other monitor uh, on the left side. And uh, but for this uh, lesson purposes, I'm going to keep it in here. And when you add some light in the scene, let's go to uh, create lights, Corona, Corona light. When you add a new light to the scene, you will instantly see that. You should see that. It... Ah, sorry, because of the material, I guess. Yeah, we have uh, some. I oh, no. Yeah, sorry, I was in the wrong camera. Now, oh, okay, then uh, it renders the active viewport, as you can see. So one way to um, avoid this is you can go to render setup, and just when this uh, while this camera is active, you can just hit the lock button in here, and then it won't render from any other viewport. It will only render from this viewport, so that you can easily change uh, whatever you want to change from here, and you will always see this render. And you can see that it's pretty blown up, so the light is uh, a little bit strong. So we can go to the Modify tab and re reduce the intensity. And you will again instantly see that we will have a uh, render accordingly. Which is very cool because it's real time. You can just move the light anywhere you want and you will see a response in here. Uh, before we continue, everything looks a little bit weird because we don't really, we haven't really used the corner render material. So let's select everything in the scene. You can hit Ctrl A for that as well, and hit M. And let's create a materials Corona Corona material and assign this material to the scene. That way we will see um, again gray but not reflective uh, objects as you can see, and it should be a little bit faster as well. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, this is a of course this is an artificial light, so we don't expect to see anything realistic with it. Let's get rid of it. I what I will recommend you to use uh, for this example is a sunlight. So let's go to create lights Corona Corona Sun, and let's just create a sunlight like this. Uh, I have just clicked and drag dragged, and then when you release you j you have to set the altitude as well. So just pull your mouse a little bit up and just click again. Uh, you can see that it's still not a realistic light because we don't have any sky on the background. The uh, sun only creates that uh, very bright sun. Uh, but if you go to the Modify tab while this is selected, uh, you can see that Add Corona Sky Environment button. If you click that, you will also have a, uh, a sky environment. So it will be more balanced of a yellow versus blue light in your scene. It looks like daylight as you can see. And also what you can do uh, is you can decrease the, uh, if you go to post tab in this viewport, I know there's a lot, there are a lot of uh, uh, theoretical knowledge I'm just uh, pouring you right now, uh, but you can just slow down the video, just rewatch these. Uh, and these are very simple stuff, but if you're not used to um, using these, then it may, uh, they may sign, sound a little bit weird uh, and uh, too much, but uh, as I told you, please rewatch this uh, as, as many times as you like. And uh, what I want you to do at the end of this lesson is please share what you come up with in CGK Facebook group, in uh, Instagram, uh, CGK, because I want to uh, see what you come up with and I want to um, make some comments about it. Uh, I want you to share them with a community and see how it feels because in my opinion, this creative energy, this artistic energy, is, um, for this energy to grow or be consistent, sharing and getting feedback is very important and not being afraid to get feedback. If someone doesn't like it, then whatever, it's not your problem, it's their problem. So, uh, But as an artist, you usually think like, 
oh, everybody has to like this. This must be a masterpiece. No, it's not. We are just creating something from uh, within ourselves. That's it. So uh, please share what you come up with, with me, with CGK, with uh, your friends and try to hear from them uh, what they think about what you do. So um, I want you to, at the end of this lesson, please save your render and share it on our Facebook group, on our Instagram page. Uh, you can just send it to me directly. Uh, you know my name. You can search for me in uh, on social media. And let's, okay, whatever, let's go on. Now, in the post tab, you can find an, a, a slot called exposure. You can just bring this down and it will instantly change your light in the scene, as you can see. And it, it started to look uh, much better the, than the blown up version. Uh, we can just play with the sun uh, sun's position or direction and you can see that it can create different uh different uh effects with this we can create different effects with effects with this uh one thing i can do is i can increase the size of the sun which will help me um, get softer shadows not just straight shadows like this let's increase the size to seven for example and you will see that these edges will blur a little bit let's make this 10 Let's make, let's make this 50 and see what's happening. And you can see that we have different effects going on. Uh, on. I'm going to bring this back to 10. Um, let's add some bloom, which is very cool in Corona. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And if I add bloom, you will instantly see that this will look much more realistic because uh, the blown up portions should look a little bit bloomy, a little bit glary. So um, it will help us with that. Can again bring this down as well and if you find this too dark then you sh uh, in my guess uh, you should open up more holes or more window holes for global illumination and you should block the sunlight with trees with curtains and stuff because direct sunlight it never happens in real life right these sun rays always go through the atm atmosphere always go through some clouds always go through some trees always bounce off uh, over buildings and then comes into our home. So it's not this bright, n uh, it's never this bright. Uh, so you can change those things. And one thing, one trick you can do is you you don't have to show the uh, sunlight to the viewer as well. Let's bring this exposure back up and let's just change the sun position. And you will see that maybe even like this. You will see that you will see more of global illumination, less of the sun, sun's blow things. And it looks much more realistic that way because, uh, as I told you, never uh, ever in real life the sun rays just go, just created from sun and directly comes to our house. It's always travels around. It, al it always goes through stuff. It always bounces uh, off things. So in real life, it should look more like this, right? And you can see that it instantly creates a more realistic uh, environment. And also, one more thing you can do for these blown up portions is you can increase this highlight compass. I never increase it above three. Uh, I usually use it uh, about two. Uh, but you will see that what this does is it gets rid of these very bright pixels and it looks more, uh, it creates a more balanced image for you. And I can just bring the exposure up for the dark portions as well. And you can see that we have uh, a little bit more of an interesting uh, looking render now uh, uh, compared to the direct sun uh, thing, right? Let's bring this back in and see uh, how it uh, acts with uh, highlight compress, compress as well. And maybe these, uh, this kind of a thing could also work. And see that uh, I really like this about corner. If I bring the sun down, uh, it's, it uh, automatically turns to a more orange, uh, yellowy color, orangey color, uh, and it, it behaves more like a sunset, I guess. And uh, one more trick I want to uh, tell you is you can uh, create some objects outside of your camera view, uh, as I told you, like curtains and frames. But I'm not going to go through those right now, but just show you to show you an example. Let's create a simple box in here, and if this drops some, some shadows it instantly creates that effect that there's things out of uh, outside of our camera view camera angle so uh, it will help with that feeling uh, you can you can use this trick as well which is very useful in my opinion okay you can see that 
uh, it's like that we have some kind of a curtain or something in the um, window, right? Okay, so these are uh, some things you can use. I'm going to use, I guess what I like is uh, not having direct sunlight in my scene. Uh, I also use HDRIs, but it's a little bit advanced, so I want to show it to you in the um, other tutorial series I talked about. Uh, for now, I can just leave it like this. And in the next lesson, we are going to add uh, some fur to the carpet. Right now, we can't even see the carpet because we don't have any uh, geometry on it. Uh, we only have a box, but uh, it just looks like the floor itself. So uh, we will add some uh, things uh, on it. Um, I know this is not realistic looking, but you can see that if we add some texture to this, if we add some material to this, it it's much more realistic looking than this, right? So we are going to we are going through a way. Uh, we are going to a. a uh, final result. So this is the first stage lighting and then we will add some materials not for this example But in the other series as I told you so um, You can see that it looks more realistic at least than this in here uh, Before I finish this lesson, uh, I want to show you some uh, a couple more things you can do uh, in the post section Which are uh, which is very helpful for me. Maybe it will be helpful for you as well. Uh, let's go top down. Uh, you have a um, slot called ba uh, white balance, which will help you make your render more bluish or more yellowish or reddish. And uh, I really like to bring this down a little bit uh, because in real life cameras, uh, this white balancing thing cameras usually do automatically. Uh, and you will usually see that some of these yellowness from the sun is dimmed down. So if you dim this down, I in my opinion, at least in my style, you get uh, more realistic results. Um, you can play with the green magenta tint. I don't really usually use this. Uh, you can add some contrast uh, to your scene from here. I don't usually use this as well. Uh, you can increase or decrease the saturation. Not that useful in my opinion. Um, you can um, tell highlights to behave like filmic highlights. If you are a post person, if you are a Photoshop person, you know some of these terms from before. but this makes uh, photo, a, a photo uh, or an image look looks like more um, printed on a film, I guess. So I usually increase these like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, but you need to, of course, try and see how they behave uh, in your scene. But what Filmic Shadows did is it um, brightened or um, softened these shadows a little bit. You can see that if I bring this back and if I increase this you can see that it softens the shadows a little bit and and the filmic highlights softens the highlights a little bit let's say I usually use a uh, vignette I really like this it just darkens the corners of the photo a little bit it will help us um, guide the viewers eye in the middle uh, to the objects we want not the uh, empty space uh, outside so you can increase this let's make this much more and you will see an exaggerated result but I guess 0.81 is uh, where I use this a lot uh, you can add a color tint to your render I don't know if this is good for realism or anything but you can uh, create some style stylish uh, render I guess styled render and in curves you have a curve editor like this where, uh, like in Photoshop if you uh, like to use uh, these things you can use it from here as well. Sometimes I use this to add color to the shadows, for example, but now I'm not going to. I really like the LUT tab. Uh, I'm going to talk about this and then close this up. Uh, in LUT, you can uh, choose a, a lookup table, which is a uh, which is a preset of colors and uh, contrast in your scene, I guess. And you can see a drop down menu in here in Corona and you can choose any of these and it will add some style to your render let's say I'm uh, using my mouse wheel to go down in uh, through these styles uh, the ones I really like are Ektachrome uh, they don't seem that much useful but let's take this to something this one I like and if I choose this I can just drop down the exposure and bring down the white balance a little bit and you can instantly see that we have a much more interesting looking a more contrasted render 
you don't maybe you don't like this then just don't use it but uh, you can use different things in here i really like kodachrome as well i think these are very contrasty very sharp looking thing uh, lut's and also you can just drop down the opacity of this as well like if you don't uh, if you want this like 50 percent then you can do it from here as well okay and we have talked about bloom and glare if you increase uh, exposures you can see that we have some glare in the blown up por portions like in here for example maybe if you have uh, you can see the effect anyways, but if you have sunlight, it will work more, but you can increase the intensity from here as well. You can just add some intensity to these and then maybe they will be more obvious. But I don't re really recommend you to play with the default values with this. Uh, if you know what you are doing, then okay, go ahead and play with them. But um, for realism, just subtle touches is good enough. So you can just click ch enable this and just forget about it. Uh, uh, well, this is what I recommend you to do. Okay, so this is uh, the first render introduction, I guess. Yeah, this was a render introduction. Uh, I don't know if it counts uh, like the, as that, uh, but uh, we will talk about this more in some other uh, series. So uh, in the next lesson, we are, we are going to create the carpet and then uh, this series will be over. Thanks for listening up to this point. Uh, I really love to share. I hope you love to listen uh, as well. Uh, so if you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.